song, you see the enemy, and the word in the Greek is called ikopto. It means that it's, it's, it's from the book of Acts where Paul the Apostle spoke and said, I endeavored to come to you many times, but Satan hindered me, delayed me. So there are many today, and the reason why I want you to make a declaration, Pastor already sensed it and said it and proclaimed it in the spirit. There has been hindrances. There's been delays. There's been a spirit of python to make you tired because what you've trusted and believed for, you have yet to see the manifestation. But you will see today through the written word of God that the challenge that you are facing, there are external principalities that endeavor to delay, to hinder. And the word ikopto in this greatest rendering in the Greek means to be on a road and almost at your destination and the road just breaks or there's a, a barricade and you have to back up and go find another path to begin again. So this morning will be a declaration morning, a royal morning, a memorial morning that on this day, this is our ikopto. We start from where we are we're backing up to realize who we are in him. And from that posture, from that position, from that place of royalty, we shall begin our life afresh again today. And as you're making that declaration and I'm making it along with you at the age of 64, you're making it along with us with the new position and the title and the role that you're walking in. And every last one of you have a royal, divine design that God has for your life, a destiny and a path and a journey that is for this season. And all of heaven has already predestined it and all of hell hates it. But there's absolutely nothing the enemy can do because what God is blessed, no man can curse. Say this with me. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that I am unstoppable. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that I am the righteousness of God created in Christ Jesus. Therefore, my success, my victory is not predicated upon my own strength, my own ability, nor my own wisdom. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that on this day, I acknowledge a divine exchange. For in my weakness, he is made strong. And on this day, I speak to my human spirit. And I say, awaken, awaken, awaken to righteousness. And I will live out the destiny, the plan, and the purpose that Jesus Christ died for, in Jesus' name, shout the loudest amen that you've shouted your entire life. You may be seated. You know, I believe the enemy works over time on us as a people. Did you all see me? On us as a people. Because historically, traditionally, the enemy has endeavored to make us believe that we are the tail and not the head. In many categories, that we are beneath and not above. In many categories, we are uh, like taking the crumbs from the table or having to receive what's left after someone got their portion or in categories and situations where there's been exploitation and there have been different types of things that through, when, you, when it repeats itself and when you begin to see it through history in different parts of the world, you can start beginning to believe that there is something about us that maybe wasn't created to be the head, wasn't created to be above, wasn't created to be above average. But the devil is a liar. And the word of God is very clear that what God wanted for the beginning, from the beginning, for all of his children, for all of his people, was from the beginning of time when Adam abdicated his role of royalty and began to see himself and began to listen. Adam and Eve both listening to the lies of the enemy. Because listen to me today, Grace, and those that are viewing. Our challenge in life is not who we are but it's who we think we are not. For we already are who we are by the grace of God. And the enemy works over time for you not to understand, for you not to walk in the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? The righteousness of God is not whether you can wear jewelry or makeup 
or pants or pre-trip, mid-trip, post-trip or baptized in Jesus' name or the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is not based upon how much you fast and how much you pray and how spiritual you are. It is not based upon anything that has anything to do with the law at all. You cannot earn it. You cannot buy it. You do not deserve it in and of your own merit. It is the grace and a free gift of righteousness from God Almighty. Shout amen. So what the enemy does, the book of Revelations is very clear, Pastor and Pastor Elsie. God pulls back the curtain and says, if you just get this, you'll start realizing the schemes and the plots of the enemy and stop drinking his Kool-Aid and stop falling for his tactics. Two things. He wants to deceive. He doesn't have a lot of tricks. He wants you to think he has a lot of tricks. He uses these two tricks in the bag. And these two tricks in the bag has proven to him throughout time to be enough to keep the greatest creation, those who are created in the image and likeness of Almighty God, those who are the head and not the tail and above and not beneath, those that are his workmanship, the apple of his eye, those who Christ in us the hope of glory, that if he begins to use these two tricks and we fall for these two tricks, it will not even matter that it costs the Father God, the blood of Jesus, for us to live out this life in its totality. It will not matter about the power of the name of Jesus. It won't matter about the power of the word of God. It will not matter about the blood. It will not matter about the word. It will not matter about anything that has been given to us as a gift, which the Bible says he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. It won't even matter in our life if we fall for these two tricks. Deception. In the garden from the very beginning, the enemy deceived Eve and Adam both that they didn't have something that they already possessed. So he saw from the beginning, it works. So if it works, let's just put, push, repeat, 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 generation after generation, repeat. Race after race, repeat. Denomination after denomination, repeat. So deception is one. And that's why you see today, a man believes he can have a baby. Or a woman believes that she's a man. Or a person believes that they're a cat, they identify as a cat. And in our country, so that you'll know I'm saying this, they have to put cat litters. They put cat litters in the schools. And the parents fight for the right so that my child doesn't have to speak in class, that when you ask her a question, she responds and says, meow. And then those who identify with a dog says, we are canines. So we want the doggy pad for us to use the bathroom on the doggy pads. The foolishness of man, when he detaches himself from the righteousness of God. So to deceive someone into identifying with something that's beneath your royalty. To deceive you to think that when it's time to pay your mortgage, you don't have enough money. To deceive you to think that when it's time to pay the par note or you need a car or you need healing or you're believing for a husband like Brandy. To deceive you into believing. Send your applications through pastor though. To deceive you into believing that God will not hear you, that God is aloof, and that God doesn't know the situation that you're in where the word of God says he knows what you have need of even before you ask. To deceive you in believing, watch this, especially in this part of the world, our own people, he works overtime with our people. You got to pour some oil on your wallet. You have to go down to the river. You have to drink some oil. You have to take some, you have to do this. You have to go, somebody have to prophesy. Somebody, you, all these different things. And that's because he wants to deceive us into not understanding the power of the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What is righteousness? It is the very nature of Almighty God. It's his nature. It's his character. It's his essence. It's his being. It's his love. It's his power. It's his wisdom. Everything that makes Almighty God everything that he is. That's in you. The hope of glory. 
But if he can deceive you into not recognizing that and embracing that and acknowledging that, the Bible gives a very clear example in the book of Ecclesiastes. It says, it's a wicked thing, Solomon says, that I've seen, that those that are slaves are upon the horse and th those that are the royalty that are supposed to be reigning are behind the horse in chains. In other words, being deceived into not understanding what your position and your role is. The second trick is the accuser of the brethren, Revelation 12 chapter, to accuse you, I'm not good enough, I don't pray enough, I'm not spiritual enough, you know what I did, you haven't fasted enough, you know what you did last week, you know the person you did not forgive, you know the attitude. So now when you get ready to believe for something and you need confidence and you need, you know, assurance, what he tries to do is now, the accuser of the brethren, you know this, God's not going to ask you a prayer. You know you have this. You haven't done that. You know who you are. And so he whispers, and he whispers, and he whispers. And the Bible says in Isaiah 54 verse 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But you know, Pastor, most often we think that, Pastor Elsie, that that means someone who's speaking against you. And I believe it has a twofold reference. Turn there, Isaiah 54 17. But no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises, and every tongue that rises, stay with me and don't allow yourself to be distracted, and every tongue that rises, that tongue that rises against you is not just others on the outside speaking against you. It's the conversations in your head from the enemy speaking against you, your confidence. Your, are you hearing me? To tell you step out in business and you don't have the money for the business. That's that voice, those voices that are speaking. You don't have enough money. You don't have, you go out for a position. You don't have enough education. You don't qualify for the job. So every, that's a tongue that's rising against you. We got to begin to understand. And when we hear that tongue that rises up against us, just like the song that you all sang, we pull that stronghold down in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, pull it down. And then you can, you never replace a thought with a thought. You never replace a thought with a thought. You never replace a thought with a thought. You can only replace a thought with the word. Proof in the word of God. Take no thought saying. Take no thought saying. Take no thought saying. Take no thought saying saying did you see that so if he can get you to be deceived about who you are and then walk around and make you feel condemned about who you are then it won't matter what God says about you and what he's done it will be like the Nicolaitans the children of God Balaam knew cannot be cursed so they curse themselves so you end up cursing yourself by simply not believing that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus someone say amen to that so coming out of the gate, that's the first thing that he tries to do. Secondly, once he puts that in place, he then begins to bring the people of God, endeavor to, into an arena where God will have so much for you, but you'll, you'll discount yourself, even though you have been made worthy. And then the word of God makes very clear in Romans, the 10th chapter, you saw this happen with the children of Israel because they kept trying to make themselves worthy by their works. And look at the wisdom of God, Pastor Edgar. God would take a man who was from the stock of Benjamin, who was astute in the law, who endeavored to keep every letter, cross every T and dot every I, and on the road to Damascus, he has an encounter with Almighty God and he recognizes that his own righteousness and his own strength and his own wisdom and everything. He says, I was an insolent and an arrogant man. God breaks him down and says, you must understand that it's not predicated upon you that every man has sinned and come short of the glory of Almighty God. And I'm going to take you who is very confident in the law, very confident in your own strength and your own righteousness righteousness and I'm going to show you that your righteousness is a filthy rag in my sight and I will use you to teach the message of grace I will show you the message of grace to a people that they will understand that it's not based upon them but it's based upon me and who I am in them it's like God had this heaven had this conversation Pastor Elsie after the fall of man after Adam and Eve transgressed. And the Bible says the lamb was slain before the foundation because God, being all-knowing, he knew what was going to happen. 
So guess what he did? The tribunal of heaven met. Let's convene. This time, that first man, Adam, he let us down. We did this based upon his own obedience. Don't eat of this tree, this one you can. We're not gonna do it this way next time. The second man, Adam, we're not gonna do it based upon what he does or his strength or his ability. We got something for those earthlings down there because they don't know what royalty means. They don't understand what we have for them. They don't understand what it's like, the fallen nature of man, when he abdicated his role and began to forfeit everything we had. The only way we're gonna get them to begin to understand who they are and to embrace everything that we have for them, we're gonna have to come up with a plan that we live in them. One of us in this tribunal are going to have to go down there. And we're gonna have to not only be with them and tabernacle with them, these people in this fallen state, the only way they will ever come back to a mentality of royalty and righteousness and come back to what we originally intended, we must think through them. In them we must live and move and have our being and it will not be predicated upon them. So I will take their sin and I will impute it as righteousness and it will not be based upon what they did right or wrong, but it will be based upon what I've done. Because I can swear by no greater oath, so I swore by myself. It is impossible for God to fail in you. Shout this out loud, Christ in me, the hope of glory. So then now you can now see, let's start out with Abraham. No wonder with Abraham, the Bible says that he believed God. He was fully persuaded of the promises of God. He considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb, nor his own body. And God says, wait a minute, I think they're getting it. Even before the Messiah comes, there's one that we can begin to do a precursor and we can begin to lay the foundation. And this can be the premise that by the time the son comes to live inside of them, they will already have a father, an example that has gone before them, that I have taken the fact that he dares to believe me. He dares to believe me. And I will model before them that I will take what they believe. Help me, Holy Ghost, today. I will take the fact when they believe me, when they take me at my word, when they receive my righteousness, I will take the fact that they believe and I will credit it. We got any accountants in here this morning? Anybody is an accountant? Any accountants? Accountant, raise your hand. You know what it means to give credit, where there is a credit. A credit means you didn't earn it. Somebody accredited you. So stay right there. God wants you to get this. God wants you to get this. I'm going to credit you. I'm gonna credit you for the house. I'm gonna credit you for the healing. I'm gonna credit you for the family. I'm gonna credit you for what you're believing for. Now I'm coming to you. Credit, that gives us a bit of a layered explanation, somewhat. But when you take it to the level of royalty, oh, now it's on steroids. It goes up another level. Because now when you talk about royalty, there's nothing she did to inherit in and of herself her birthright. Talk to me, someone. Everything that you're walking in this dispatch of your life is because of your birthright. Say it, my birthright. Say it again. Let it get in, the, let it get in your bedrock core of your belief system. My birthright. Now watch this. Because of her birthright and the position that it took them 12 years to bring her into, in that position, can someone dispute or dismantle or discredit or annihilate or steal from her her birthright? 
Question, response. Can they? Because the birthright was given. It's her heritage. It's her birthright. The same birthright you have been born into. You are so born into a heavenly kingdom, royal birthright that no man can take from you. No man can resist from you. Somebody shout, my birthright. So because of that birthright, now when I get ready to pray and I need healing, I'm not praying for healing and hoping God will heal me because I've been goody-goody or hope that God will heal me because I come to prayer or hope that God will heal me because I fast all the time and hope that God will heal me because, heal me because, heal me because he will do it not predicated upon but because of my birthright. Oh, God. So no wonder the enemy, the first thing he tried to do, huh, I think about things like this, Pastor. He didn't try to get Adam and Eve to steal as the initial sin. He didn't try to get them to kill. He tried to get them to forfeit their to forfeit their, I say it louder, to forfeit their birthright. Because if you forfeit your birthright, that is your righteousness. That's what puts you in right standing. That's what gives you assurance and confidence. The Bible says, look at these things. And, say, and because we've not spent so much time alone with God to really meditate and get a deeper, 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 alone with God understanding of his righteousness. Let's look how we just have almost overlooked it. With Abraham, he said he imputed the fact that he believed as righteousness. The Bible says in Matthew, the sixth chapter, seek ye the kingdom of God and his. Hmm. The Bible says in Isaiah 54, verse 17, that every no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against you thou shalt condemn. And y'all, we stop right there. But what does the B portion of that verse say? And your righteousness is of me. Go back and look at Isaiah 54, 17. So then that means the very mere fact that when I walk in the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Why can no weapon formed against me prosper as I walk in my righteousness? Because in him I live and move and have my being. And my confidence is in him. That no good thing will he withhold from me as I walk uprightly. My confidence is in the mere fact that my God is a very present help in a time of trouble. My confidence is in I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty because of his righteousness in me. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my righteousness. In him I put my trust because of his righteousness I can tread upon serpents and scorpions because of his righteousness I can step out to build eco villages when I don't have the money because of his righteousness I qualify for what I don't qualify for because of his righteousness I have peace because of his righteousness it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about me because it's if I am the righteousness of God I'm seeking to please the one who enlisted me so first Peter 3 verse 12 tells us that with this righteousness, this righteousness that we have, it gives us the benefit. Then also we see, let's go, let's go to some ones that we commonly have overlooked. Matthew 6 says that when we seek first his righteousness, when we seek first his righteousness, aha, no wonder. Seek his righteousness first, which is his kingdom. When you put it first, when you get this in your bedrock first. So, Pastor Winston, and you all have heard me say this before. Pastor Winston kept telling me, you've got to go and rebuild and embrace and lay a foundation, Patricia, on your righteousness in him. From that foundation and premise, faith is stacked on top of that. Faith is built on, because from your righteousness comes assurance, confidence, a knowing, strong faith that my God will do this, 
because he's not doing this predicated upon me, but he's doing this to back his own word. Are you hearing me? So now when I pray, I pray from a different posture. There was this rabbi that died and went to heaven. He didn't believe in Jesus. He didn't believe in the Bible. He didn't believe of any of this. He believed in the Torah, you know? And when he got to heaven, God began to deal with him about righteousness, about a righteous conscious mentality versus a sin conscious mentality, a need versus prayer. And so he could see in heaven where all these prayers were coming up and they were need-based prayers, need based prayers, need based prayers, need based prayers. I need this. I need this. I want this. I need this. Oh God, please do it this for me. Oh God. Oh, oh. And you know how we can do all night. We'll have all night prayer. Oh, please God, please Father, please do it for me. And then us is, you know, it's going to, when you like this, then you think the louder you are, the more he hears. God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you and I decree in the name of Jesus that you shall do this for me. I decree in the name of Jesus. And heaven is like, as if the word does not say in John, this is the confidence we have that when we pray, we know you. And because you, we know that the petitions I've been good. Now watch this. You gave the example with, with the Queen of England to our dear Queen Clara. Can you imagine? You are now the queen. And someone comes to you and they have a need. And they come into your presence and say, please forgive me. I'm doing this as an illustration. Queen Clara! I'm asking you! My family does not have food! Oh, if you're from Nigeria. And the queen is more willing to give them the food than they are more willing to receive. So can you imagine heaven is saying, wait a minute. Wait a minute. These earthlings, these earthlings that are created in your image and likeness. Know they not that you know what they have need of even before they ask? Did they not see in the word that you shall supply all of their need according to your riches and glory? Did they, did, they, did they not see that they are the apple of your eye? Why are they yelling at us? It insults God. Even let's give the example further. Let's say if the Queen of England was alive and Charles as a young boy was hungry. And he's in the palace. And he wants food. And he goes to wake up his mother, the queen. Mother! I am hungry! We need to go get our son checked. He needs to lay down on somebody's couch. So, and the baby said, and a little child shall lead them. Everybody say amen. The child is telling us to say amen. Now, if we will do that to a natural position of royalty, how much more? Let's look at a few more scriptures before we close. Is anyone getting anything out of this? And he's worked overtime with us not getting it. First of all, Romans 3 verse 10 says, there's nothing you can do to earn it. Romans 3 10 says that you can't earn it. You cannot purchase it. It cannot be appropriated. It can only be appropriated by faith. Therefore, this inheritance that we've been born into, this status that we've been born into, we must walk in it by faith. We must walk in it by faith. What do you mean, Dr. Bailey? Two things. Listen, don't miss this. Remember I told you about the two tricks that he tries, deception and then to be accuser. Here's another two tricks that he really tries with our people. That righteousness... And God's presence or what he's going to do is based upon what you can see or based upon what you can feel. So now I'm going to pick on my own culture, okay? In my culture, we, they said, you know, you grew up in the Pentecostal church. The spirit took over her. And fall out. You go on YouTube. You see them. The wig went this way. She went that way. And then, and then when the service is over, pastor. And you're living your everyday life. And there's no music. There's no. And it's time to pay your bills. 
or you got a doctor's report and you don't feel. Because God says, I don't want what I have for you to be based upon. Oh, you don't like that, do you? So then the devil big chance to try to control the atmosphere. Because when you're facing bills or you're on a job and you're dealing with people that you work with who don't like you, and you don't like them, but you don't want to confess it. But anyway, you, 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 you got to walk in something that's more than feelings. Then the Bible says that the kingdom of God cannot be observed with the physical eye. So that means that this thing that we're talking about, the righteousness of God and the kingdom of God, it has nothing to do with sight. So that means if my bank account looks zero, it has nothing to do with my wealth. If the doctor's report says I'm sick, it has nothing to do with my healing. If my children are acting rebellious, it has nothing to do with that they are the arrows of the Lord. Are you hearing me? The Bible says that the expectation of the righteous shall never be denied, shall never be cut off. So I said, you know, wouldn't it be awesome, Pastor, if, in, you know, in the book of Antioch, they were called Christians, right? That's the first place they were called Christians. What if we were all called righteous people? Guess what the Quran says? The Quran in Surah 315, the people of the book shall show us our righteousness. The people of righteousness. The people of righteousness. The people of righteousness. Therefore, when we come before him, back to that rabbi, these knees-based prayers that were coming up. And heaven was watching all of these need-based prayers. And heaven was waiting for royal declarations. Can I say that again? There were all these need-based, crying, shouting, needy prayers. As opposed to heaven saying, I've already given you all things to pertain. Just decree so that I can watch over my word to perform it. Jeremiah 5, verse 22, it doesn't matter how, how the sea toss or the, uh, the waves toss of the sea roar, but the sand has been given as a boundary to the ocean. Therefore, there shall be a perpetual decree. So now the position that she's in, she will begin to decree things. And when she decrees things, she doesn't have to yell. She doesn't have to shout. When she makes a declaration, things begin to move. That's why God said through Jesus, when he saw the Roman centurion, they said, you don't have to come to my house. All you got to do is make a decree. Just speak the word and my daughter shall be healed. The enemy hates the mere fact that we ever even begin to embark upon this. Mankind keeps trying and keeps trying to provide what has already been provided. That's why God wants us to awake unto righteousness and begin to no longer walk in sin. Because as long as you sin conscious, you'll continue to sin. As long as you work conscious, you'll continue to do works. As long as you're need-driven and need-based prayers, your prayers will always be needs, your needs. Met. And he says, and listen to what he said. In the same Matthew 6 chapter, he says, what? It's the Gentiles who pray like this. What shall I eat? What shall I drink? What shall I wear? Know ye not that your father, you're righteous. He knows what you have need of even before you ask. Look at the examples that he wanted to show the nations that were around watching to see what righteous people look like. All the other nations of the earth, they had to toil the ground to be able to get their food. But the righteous people of God, manna came from heaven. The righteous people of God, their clothes grew with them. The righteous people of God, water came out of a stone. Are you hearing me? And so when everybody else is need-based, we now operate this way. That's why Romans, the 10th chapter, tells us this. Romans 10, 9, and 10. And then it goes on to say, don't miss this one. When this revelation came right here, I was like, how do we miss this, Pastor Edgar? How did we all miss this? It says that the word of faith people speak on this wise. They call those things that be not as though they were. Okay. So that means that they're not even talking needs base. That means that they have a different language. That means they have a different perspective. So watch this, people. Jehovah Jireh does not mean the Lord thy God that provides. Nope. 
The real Hebrew meaning means the Lord thy God that provides before the need arises. So look at me. Look at me one. Look, 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 look. Look, 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 look. He's trying to bring us in our righteousness. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at this. Look at this. Watch this. Watch this. You ready? On this side, Father, I need this. I need this, Daddy. Daddy, please do this for me. On this side, I thank you, Father. I believe I receive it in Jesus' name because you want me to receive it even before I have it. Therefore, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, my needs are met. I'm out of debt. I have plenty more to put in store. I decree and declare I'm developing communities. I decree and declare that there's an inexhaustible supply for what you have for me. Father, I thank you that because of the shed blood of Calvary's cross, Father God, you positioned me to have a portal to heaven. Therefore, I can walk in my royalty. I can walk in my righteousness. So, Father, I don't know what righteous package you got for me today, but, Father, guess what? This daughter right here, I want everything you got for me. Shout amen, someone. And with that comes confidence. Hebrews 10, 35, 36. Cast not away your confidence, for it has great recompense of reward. Last two verses, look at this. Who is anybody getting as much out of this as I am? So no wonder he said that your righteousness is a filthy rag to me. So I'm going to use this. I mean, you, only Pat Bailey will do something like this. And knowing it's going to be aired. Of course, I have on makeup. You don't be 64 and not wear makeup. <laughs> and because we are black people, our makeup is brown. But this will prove my daughters to be a good illustration of what I'm endeavoring to teach as I close. Exhibit A, a filthy rag. Are you seeing this? Can someone get me a clean rag, a clean cloth, a clean hanky? He says that I came, you stand, you are always my exhibit person. Come, yes, he does such a, oh. <laughs> and he's so tall, so he, so hold your exhibit. Exhibit A, that's what Christ came to do for us. So that when we go before the Father, there is no sin. There is no guilt. There is no shame. There is no condemnation. There is confidence knowing that when I pray, he will hear me. And he knew I couldn't do it on my own and my own strength. So he became that for me. But religion and tradition wants me to earn it, to pray enough and fast enough and pray loud enough and do enough. And God says, and when you do all that you've done, this is what your righteousness looks like versus my righteousness. Are you seeing this? Ta get your phone out right now. Everyone, get out your phone. Take a picture of this. And throughout the week, when the enemy tries to condemn you or make you think that you're not going to get what you're believing for and that your prayer is not going to be answered and you're not going to live out your destiny and you will not fulfill what God has for you, can the minister begin to play softly? And that you will never, ever, ever be everything that God intended for you to be. And that someone else is always going to be ahead of you and someone else is always going to have more. And because of what happened in your bloodline and your bloodline of your family and your family's family, that you're always going to have this mark upon you and you can never dream the biggest dreams and you can never be the person that you desire to be. Yep, yep. Take a picture of this. Because as you endeavor to go out and do and live your life, based upon your own strength and ability. As you continue to listen to the accuser and the deceiver, the accuser and the deceiver, the accuser and the deceiver. The accuser wants you to keep your eyes on this. The deceiver wants you to keep your eyes on this. When Messiah wants you to see yourself as this. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Shout the loudest amen. So no wonder Genesis 15, 6 says that Abraham believed and God credited it for righteousness. No wonder he said that this kingdom life cannot be observed with the eye. No wonder when the prodigal son came to himself and came back and Begin to remind himself of his righteousness. And the other brother that did not see his righteousness was angry because the brother had come home. And the daddy said, your birthright. You both have a birthright. And you both were given your inheritance at the same time. We forget that when we read that verse. They both got their inheritance. 
But the one boy, he was lost in the house and the other one was lost in the field. It's worse to be lost in the house. What does it mean to be lost in the house? You're sitting there with all the cows. You're sitting at the spout where the water comes out every Sunday morning with a powerful word that's coming from this podium. You sit with the Bible on your phone. You have been blood bought. You have been purchased. You've been redeemed. He has given you and endowed you with his name and his nature and his blood and his power and to have all of that and start trying to get to God and please God and live your life and qualify and be validated by men and not by God to try to get in where you don't fit in to try to live your life propped up by your own strength it's a slap in the face to God when he says I've already given you everything that pertains to life and God. Oh, Father, that you would give us a heavenly vision. If only you will allow us to wake up to righteousness. If only you will allow us to see, Father God, that when we're righteousness, our expectations will not be denied. If only we can see Psalm 34, 15, that says that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. If we only can see that Isaiah 32 verse 17 says that in righteousness is your peace. If we only understood that we don't have to toil. And we don't have to struggle. But there is a life inside of us. Put your hand on your belly. And we're going to awaken to this righteousness. Say to your righteousness, say wake up. Say arise. Like Pastor spoke earlier, Deborah arose and things start happening. Can I tell you what my prayer is for the congregation this morning, Pastor Edgar and Elsie? Is that in this Sunday morning, on this more monumental occasion, that as she is arising to her new enthroned 